Okay, everyone. One new thing today. What's new today is the first episode of Aditi's talk show. Please welcome my dear friend Shweta, from whom we are going to learn about image consultancy. Have you heard about image consultancy? Frankly, I did not know what the term means unless she told me about it. She said, "We have to have our personal brands. Really, do we need brands? Let's ask her and hear from her and enlighten ourselves." So, Shweta, tell us. What is image consultancy? Oh uh, well, image consultancy is nothing but like extension of your personal plan and something that is in sync with your inner self and your exterior. So I came across this term while reading an article and going through some one of the YouTube videos, and it just clicked with me and it was something that I you know could relate to. So um, then I researched some more about it and then I came across a few people in Singapore who were doing image consultancy. And uh, yeah. so people are even pursuing careers yeah, in image consultancy because we are in this century where we cannot ignore our uh, external self and we have to like maintain and keep up with the changes globally. So we have a global image. It's no longer like limited to one country. It's just the international image that we have to maintain. So I think um, it is not harm in investing a bit in yourself and maybe you know. Okay, I also um, used to always used to think that. We are whatever actually speaks for us. Yeah, I didn't know there are many other factors which contribute towards projecting your image in a better way. Yes. So uh, Shweta is going to help us with the A, B, and C of the image consultancy. So Shweta, what's A, B, and C? Oh uh, well, like when me and other people were discussing about image consultancy, and we were like, it's a very vast topic, and we cannot cover the entire thing in one video. So then we thought we could just cover basics of it. That A, B, C. A is appearance, B is behavior, and C is communication. So let's repeat for everyone: A is for appearance, B is for behavior, and C is for communication. Let's work on our A B Cs for protecting our brand. Okay. okay. So appearance. What does it mean? Appearance um, is something that people see even before we open our mouth. Because we see our existence and our image. That is our image. Appearance is like the basis of our image. When you enter a room or enter a Platform, people look at you and see how this person is dressed up. So, I mean, you know, substance and your inner actions do play a major role. But the first thing is, how do you look? So, looking is important. Important and, and being appropriately dressed for an occasion is also very important. I mean, you can't wear uh, an alkali to gym, and you cannot wear your sports shoes to um, <laughs> a party or you know, some you know, bikini, you know, you know formal event. Or in, in fact, in terms of colors also, <laughs> certain colors are very formal and certain colors are very informal. For example, a bright yellow, um, it's my favorite color though, but I I don't think it's a formal color per se. To wear to office, to wear to office, or you know, to dress up in yellow in a formal occasion. So let's say you are going to office, uh, which shade do you wear? I prefer. I mean, I wear red personally to office, but I mean, the safer colors would be white, black, maybe blue, grey, which are. Um, Easy on your eye because often you will be like meeting clients and other people, so you should not like stand out like a sore thumb. You should be like blending with the crowd and wearing yeah. something that's easy on eye, so that people who are talking to you can also focus on your talk and substance instead of your dress. So I would say like wear neutral colors and some uh, base textural shades. And then what about managing the hair? You know, Is it okay to leave them open to work? Or I think the, if your hair, hair are nicely done, and my hair are very unkempt most of the time, but if you can just iron your hair or you know tie them in a bun or um, keep it properly, I think it will be good. I mean, it makes it it makes it it, it gives a clean look to you. I mean, nobody is born perfect or nobody looks perfect, but you can always make a little effort in um, you know fine tuning your look and. Uh, So, so looking guys, neat, ne looking neat is most important. I mean, makeup is not important. Looking neat, neat is, and, yeah, it's more important. So when Shweta said fine tuning, I think uh, she meant to have a perfect haircut. By perfect, I mean regular haircut, not that hair grown into split ends or something. And then nails done. Not necessarily you go to a parlor to do your nails. You can do it at home. You can do it at home, but they should be cut and you know neat. Mm -hmm. uh, they they shouldn't be uh, dirty. Also with your footwear. As sometimes I have observed the footwear is making tuck 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 noise. Uh, yeah. Do you think it is okay or it is um, not okay? I I think it's not okay. Depending, I mean, depending how silent your workplace is or silent the place. I mean, sometimes in hospitals, if 
somebody is doing tak tak tak, so it can be really distracting and disturbing. So, um, it's really good to have like a flat shoe or. So, know. is there something we can do to walk better, or we better buy footwear that do not make? I think we better buy footwear. Invest in one good footwear that does not make noise and all. You know, instead of having ten uh, useless kind of footwear. <laughs> I okay, then let's that. go to let's go to B. So B is the behavior. B is the behavior, and and uh, I just want to tell. I mean, in some cases, it's not only for people who are working. Even in day to day life, even teenagers can really uh, start practicing it. I mean, they can start early so that once they are. It's always better to start early. It's always early. better to start early, and it's not like oh, these people are going to office only; they have to do it. So, so oh, that's a that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. I I I feel I really need to learn and do it because. Usually, I've seen myself getting ready only if it's a particular occasion. Otherwise, I'm more than happy in my t-shirt and uh, you know <laughs> exercise clothes. Same, 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 same for me. And once I remember, I just want to share one incident. Um, my father had ordered groceries, and I was at home to collect it. I mean, I was at home generally. And the guy he went and he told my dad that, "Oh, I've delivered your mail. I've collected." I'm like, what? <laughs> Because I was so like casually dressed, and you know, just unkempt or something. I'm like one. I mean that one comment really left a big impact on me. I said, "My mate." <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Like okay. <laughs> so I, I feel because everybody has to self. I think we all have to face it. I think we just stay um, unkempt and casual and you know, not made up, which is just fine. I mean I do like that. I mean I stay like that. But um, I think it's fine. So some more things that we can add to the behavioral aspect. Behavioral, behavioral. Okay, is something our expression, voluntary and involuntary expression. Expression. We need to control our expression. Sometimes we don't realize the kind of faces we are making. <laughs> we just don't realize. And for being approachable, like for example, other people is such a vivacious person. Anybody who enters the room automatically they will you know go and get attracted towards. No, they are. Okay. I can give my example. I think you look up. I mean, some of my friends are very arrogant and um, unapproachable. Oh, person. not at all. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a perception, you know, how comfortable people be. So I think your smile. Mm-hmm. If you smile, I mean, you have a certain smile. But if you give a nice, positive smile and outlook, I think uh, automatically people get attracted. You know, you will be in, and they get attracted to positive. So always carry a smile. Carry a smile, <laughs> and even if you are. Your day is bad. If you start smiling, automatically you feel better. So behavior is how you conduct yourself at home in public and how you interact with others. So I think your expressions and how you talk and how you um, react to certain situations. Behavior is also about you know not checking the phone while you're yeah, in the situation. Yeah, it's very rude. It's rude. It's very rude. And then you know uh, sometimes not carrying your phones mm-hmm. and listening to something on your phone loud. That also is not a good idea. When when you are anywhere, doesn't matter whether you are at office. Even if you are at a public place, it is not suggestible that you do it. Yeah, it's better to be cautious of the people around. Around. So we have covered A and B. Let's now move to C. Communication. Why is communication important? I think communication is important because if you are not able to convey the message that is intended for, then it doesn't make it. It, it loses all the purpose of communication. Yeah. But let's hear from Sita more on communication. Communication is how you communicate. You can communicate with expression, without even opening your mouth, or maybe by gestures. So, um, I personally feel. I mean, I'm a very direct communicator. If I have something, I will say directly instead of beating behind the bush. So, it's very important to articulate your thoughts, what you are speaking, and what you are feeling should be in sync. So, and one thing I have, I mean, read somewhere that if you don't have anything good to say, better you keep your mouth shut. Yeah, so, makes sense. You know, if, just don't. Talk negatively. And now that people are under so much stress, they are so busy. Nobody wants to, you know, looking for negativity. Yeah. So, you know, communicating, focus on positive aspects and appreciate each other and appreciate your surroundings. And um, to be an effective communicator, you need to be a good listener. Sometimes people are sitting now and not focusing. They are listening, pretending to listen, mm-hmm. but um, not listening actually. Not focusing on what uh, the conversation is. And suddenly, like, huh? What? Yeah. Really and when you ask the person yeah. to repeat. It feels really, you know, the other person feels yes, offended yes, 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 that you yes, were not paying attention yes, when the person yes. was telling about it. Yeah. So yes. it being a good listener always helps is a part of a good communication. Good communication as well. Yeah. Good listener and a good speaker as well. And uh, 
I mean, I think if you wanted that, uh, even if you feel bad or if you feel offended by uh, a comment or you feel that maybe, you know, that comment is um, somebody's passing a snide remark at you, don't show a reaction immediately. I mean, just swallow it, digest it and think over it. And then give your reaction instead of showing your immediate reaction. I mean, that, that is something I don't like personally. I don't like everything all the way people say sometimes, but I don't show my immediate reaction. That's something I'm not. It's better to be poised. Yeah, call it, yeah let me uh, give at least 48 hours for yourself to you know, react to a situation if you don't like something. And it's better to think over what the other person said. Other person said. And uh, so when we were in a conversation about the misconception, Shweta also mentioned to me about the body language and the gestures. Would you like to tell something on the body language and the gestures? Body language is something the way you sit and the way you... I think all the ladies are actually now good. Everybody par excellence. We are a smart bunch of uh, women. But I mean body language, controlling your heart, body language goes a long way. And how you are like other things in a very really formal way. This is a body language that is, you are listening carefully. And not like, <laughs> like this. You know, I mean, it's very bad for the speaker if somebody's like feeling sleepy or, you know, dozing off. So it's, you need to be attentive as a listener. And certain body languages can be like very uh, rude and robust, you know, overpowering. So a person can get intimidated that uh, I think this person is too powerful. If you're putting your hands on your waist and, you know, it, it looks you're ready to fight, whereas your intention may not be like hmm. that so your body and you can do a bit more research on that and uh, sitting cross leg and you know not uh, sitting in control i mean i think all these things play in a big role does posture also matter it does i think it does not i mean i would not i mean it's a very vast topic to touch um, on posture and body language but um i can just say one i think that be in control of your arms and legs you know see how you <laughs> don't just anyhow let you lose you know Keep it in control. Keep cross legs. Sweta. And we have a little hamper to give to her. Oh my Sweta, god. Thank you so much for <laughs> oh speaking god. to us. <laughs> Stay tuned for more episodes of our Disney Star. And I have, I have one last thing to add. Mm-hmm. Looks can kill, you know. Sometimes uh, you may not say something, but the way you look at certain things can really, uh, you know, leave a very bad impact on people. So I think you should control your gaze and how you look at so yeah, that, that is one part of body language. Stay tuned with us. We are going to come back on fashion rules and uh, skincare and other things. Love you all. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs>